Good evening, everybody. How are you doing? This is Out of the Fog, a local matter show that goes right across the province and beyond. And we're all hanging out with the cool people doing the cool things, and that's how we like it. I'm your boy, DC, and tonight on the show, we have two performances and a little hang with the incredible Summer Bennett, new found talent competition winner with Music NL, and she's burning it up, writing songs and breaking hearts. And then we have our friend Melissa Tarrant, and she is one of the guiding forces of craft in our province. It is the Kitty Vitti Artists and Studios and at Templeton Center. You're gonna learn all about that. But first, the first of two songs. This is Car Sick by Summer Bennett. Rogers TV, St. John's. Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have a premium ticket to out-of-market regular season games with all games available in HD. Don't miss the action from the games you want from both the American and National Leagues. MLB Extra Innings, part of the Super Sports Pack. For only $35.95 a month, Rogers customers get all this for one all-inclusive price. Order using your remote starting on Channel 431 or visit Rogers.com today. Watching Rogers TV, St. John's. 
Welcome back, everybody. This is Out of the Fog, and I'm so pumped to be hanging out with Summer. We heard a song just before this hang, and now here we are again. <laughs> How are you doing? I am great. How are you? You look great. Thank you so much. It's the Emerald Green moment we're having here. A little <laughs> tribute to spring, is it? Yeah. I love it. Where does your love of music come from? Well, I mean, I've been like playing my entire life, and I've been listening growing up with like my entire family is pretty musical and um, like it kind of goes in the family too like my parents you know also play instruments and so cool. I've been writing music since I was six pretty oh, much wow. so it kind of just melodies and chords come naturally to me and so it's always been really easy so I've been doing it my whole life so music is like the love of my life. I want to ask you the first song Karsik. Yes. You know, when you hear that title, you wonder as a listener, what am I going to hear? What is this about? Why don't you tell us? Um, well, Karsik is a metaphor for feeling anxious and stuck in a car. And I mean, the reason I really wrote it was I wrote it this summer and it's because I was in a, um, I was in a group that I didn't really fit into. It was mm. like a camp that mm. I went to and okay. um, there was messed up stuff and um, I didn't fit in and they were mean and mm. blah, blah, blah. And I was just already super anxious about going. Mm -hmm. um, so like I went home and I didn't want to go back and I just, I couldn't deal with it. So I wrote down and I just wrote this song, this metaphor called Carsick. Um, and it, it does mean a lot to me because at the beginning it's mainly about that. But as it goes on, it's kind of listing other things that I'm really anxious about. So. Do you think that writing that list and writing that song was, you know, therapeutic for you? Oh, 100%. Mm -hmm. Pretty much all my songs are like that. So true, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You feel better after you write something that's personal to you. Yes. Get it out of your head and, and onto paper. Yes. Or a computer, depending on how we do it <laughs> these days. How do you write? Are you pen and paper? Are you texting the notes to yourself? How does that happen for you? I mean, it, all of the above. Mm. I mean, I have I mean, I'd say mainly like the notes in my phone because I kind of have that with me everywhere. Mm -hmm. And if I'm like ever in public and I'm, or like in the middle of the night, I wake up, I'm like, oh, that's a good song lyric. I should, and then I just grab my phone and I just write it down. I always have it with me um, if I have an idea. And so if I ever need to play somewhere or something and don't know the lyrics to a song, I always have it. So I always kind of try and write on my, um, on, on my phone, but, yeah. um, when I was younger and years ago, it was mainly on paper, but I think I'm going to my phone now. So. It's funny how, because it's, it's, right, it's already by you, you know? It's yeah. already there. And you can also record the melodies in the voice yeah. note section, which I love to do, especially like if you're out living life and something comes to you, like you say, it's so helpful yeah. to re record it, because you forget. Oh, 100, yes. Like it's gone. Yeah. You know, if you don't write it down in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. I love that. So um, we first met at the newfound yes. talent competition, <laughs> Blue minds, the judges, <laughs> all the crew were there just like, um, this girl is blowing us away right now. Did you expect to do so well? No. <laughs> and it's because, um, I mean, that song that I sang, like I wrote the chorus like two years prior to that. And I was like, yee, no. So I ditched it. But I played it for my parents once and you know, we were trying to pick a song to sing there. and. Right. They were like, oh, do this one, which was lightning. Do, do lightning, do lightning. And I was like, no, 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 no. Um, but they ended up pushing me into it. And it was, this was like a week before um, the competition. And I only had a chorus. And so I just sat down and I finished it. I'm like, I'm so scared. This is not good enough. And I was not confident with my song choice. But I kind of trusted them, I guess, which yeah. is a, a rare thing for me to do. But <laughs> I'm very glad I did it because you know, it's really, it's a catchy song, and mm -hmm. um, I am quite proud of it. It's Good. it's a difficult song as well, so I was really scared to sing it live. And I think that's the main reason that, like, I didn't want to actually sing it is because it's really hard to sing. It's hard on your voice. It's high. It's, like, it's a really hard pop song to sing. So, but they pushed me into it, and I did it, and it was worth it. <laughs> I'd say. And we're going to hear Rust when we close out the show. Yeah. And we're in our final minute of our hang right now. I told you time flies. Um, <laughs> describe for the viewers what they're going to hear when you perform Rust. Uh, well, Rust is, I think, my best song that I've written lyric-wise. Mm. 
Um, and I'm very, 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 very proud of that song. Um, it means a whole lot to me. It's so fun to sing, and it's sad. It's it's sad. <laughs> um, and the lyrics are gorgeous. I mean, the rust soaks in my mouth is the lyric, and I think wow. that it means a whole lot to me. Um, and I'm really excited for people to hear it. <laughs> well, I can't wait for them to hear it. And thank you so much. I want you to come back. <laughs> I see big things. I feel great energy. There's a sophistication and an intelligence in your songwriting and your performance that I think is fresh. And a lot of people listening across the province and beyond are going to tune into that. So thank you so much for coming Thank on. you so much. Yes, we'll come back. Yes, I want to. I love it. Please do. <laughs> Guys, this is Out of the Fog. This is our girl Summer B. And we'll be right back after this break. It all started when I racked up some serious debt. Interest payments were going up, creditors were calling. Jane's and Noseworthy came up with a plan. Knowing that the phone was going to stop ringing and that I was not in this alone was a huge relief. Bankruptcy or a consumer proposal or whatever help you get is not the end. It's just the beginning. A chance to start again with knowledge and support and people in your corner. Are you ready? Get out of debt. It's okay. Learn more about Leah's story at janesnoseworthy.ca. My husband is a wonderful man and a great father when he's not drinking. I'm so angry he chooses alcohol over us. If he really loved us, he'd stop drinking, right? My counselor suggested I try Al-Anon. I didn't understand why. I'm not the one with the problem, but I'm glad I went. Do you worry about someone's drinking? You are not alone. Al-Anon or Alateen can help. Call 866-200-0033 or visit alanon.org slash hope. Welcome back, everybody. This is Out of the Fog. Am I ever excited to have someone who is so passionately helping us lead all things art and artisans and craft forward in the province, not just at one location, but at multiple. And we'll talk all about that. Melissa, how are you doing? Hey. How's I'm life? doing well. Good. Yeah, I'm glad Thank you came you. here today. Thanks for inviting me. But there's so much to talk about, you know? Mm -hmm. Craft is a topic that means so much to us in so many ways when it comes to friends and family and ourselves who work in the field in different mm -hmm. ways. The industry that it is, the history and the future of it, I mean, it's a big topic. What do you think about all that? There's certainly a lot going on in this province with craft, and we are really lucky to live in a province that's so rich with craft, um, and craft that's passed down between uh, different generations, um, and there's just such a rich culture of it here. Now, there's two locations especially that have a lot to do with the creation and mentorship and, and selling and access to craft. Why do you tell us about each of those locations, and we'll dig deeper. Yeah, um, so I look after the Anna Templeton Center for Craft, Art and Design, which mm -hmm. has been a staple in St. John's for a very long time. True. Um, over COVID, we kind of disappeared for a little bit because it was a bit challenging to offer classes. However, last fall, we regrouped and came back with a nice program of classes. Uh, really happy to see how many people picked up craft over the pandemic mm -hmm. uh, and how many people were really interested in diving in and taking a class and getting more involved and learning more so all of our classes are filling as quickly as we can offer them wow which is fantastic that's and amazing we're so happy that we that all of our people stick stuck with us and yeah. are still here and we're so eager to see us offer classes again you know oftentimes we think of craft in one one way or another but it's quite a wide variety of ways that someone could enter into the Anna Templeton Center and then engage in one of the many facets of what craft is. Why don't you give us some examples of the different types of you know, outputs or different types of disciplines that you can engage in at the Anna Templeton Center? Uh, the Anna Templeton Center, for its programming that we offer, there's quite a bit that's there. Um, we will cover the visual arts aspect with art, um, and we have drawing and painting classes, watercolor, acrylic, kind of a variety of offerings there. So cool. We have different drawing classes, uh, figure drawing and costume drawing. Uh, then we also have a variety of then more craft-based activities as well. Uh, one of our really popular ones is rug cooking, mm -hmm. traditional Flynn rug cooking, which is really exciting. Uh, we also have crochet and stained glass, which we can't offer enough stained glass classes right now. Everyone wow. seems to be super interested. So cool. Um, but there's, there's a tons of different things um, that we can offer. I love it. So cool. Mm -hmm. So now, that's what's going on in the downtown core. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a little spin out to Kitty Vitty Artisan yes. Studios. Loving the name. 
the name. Well, we're very happy. It talks about what we do in the building. So we, we are an artisan studio down there. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, the Kitty Vitty Village Artisan Studio is a craft-based business incubator for mm. emerging craft people. Uh, it is a project of the Anna Templeton Centre, kind of continuing on the education piece. Um, so we accept people into the incubator program who have a passion and have the skill behind the craft and the technique, but need help with the business skills in order to get their business to where it needs to go. Mm. Uh, so right now we've got 10 artisans down there. The studios are full. Uh, a wide range of stuff down there as well yeah. and it's super exciting because you can come in and actually watch the craftspeople work uh, mm. and then you can buy products from them as well so you can see the process see how things are made uh, learn a little bit about traditional craft techniques or innovative new craft techniques there's all sorts of things happening yeah no from my times being down there is such a diverse number of artisans and to your point the disciplines are so varied and the products they make mm. are so amazing and to have that front row to how craft happens I think is fascinating to see and mm. you must get a lot of great feedback from people who come down. People love it. Uh, they often walk into the building not knowing what they're walking into. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, once you're in the building, everyone leaves very happy with mm. the experience that they've had down there. And I can only imagine the craft people who get lucky enough to incubate in the artisan studios um, enjoy the journey as well because let's face it, a lot of us begin art out of passion and love, but to your point, the business sides can be quite overwhelming. How do you help the artisans gain more um, creative courage and confidence under the umbrella of the business side mm. of craft? So the mentorship that will happen is a lot of informal mentorship. Um, everyone is in the same boat, so everyone helps each other a lot. And we also have a huge network of experts in the fields that we'll bring in and do sessions when we find that people really need help mm -hmm. in a particular area or topic. Right. Um, however, we have such a huge network of people that there's a lot of advice that can be offered and, and help along the way. But even things like during the pandemic, everyone started shipping product and everyone started mm. selling things online. So instead of running your business out of your house, you now have nine other entrepreneurs who have the exact same struggles and are trying to figure out where do I buy packaging, how do I ship stuff. So you've got people you can bounce ideas off of and really learn a lot from each other in addition to the programming that happens. That's so cool. I guess it's sort of like... Um you know, like their colleagues. Yeah. And I wonder, do they everyone go in at the same time and graduate at the same time? How does that work? There's always people coming and going. Love it. So um, people come, you have the opportunity. Usually, I'm going to say around three and a half years or so, people are kind of outgrown their space down mm. there, which is our goal. Of course. Well, that, that's uh, important to say, is the goal is to help anyone who enters into one of those areas on the second floor to get so successful that they got to grow up out of it. Yeah. So, uh, but five years is what kind of the the longest range that people oh, wow. stay for. So usually between a year and five years. That's amazing. So it really depends on people where they're at in their mm. business mm. and how things are going, how long they stay for. So there's constantly people leaving and there's constantly new people coming. Right. Mm -hmm. And now I want to say that, you know, in all of the times being down there and around the area, it is so picturesque and scenic and incredible. Mm -hmm. Do you find that um, your unique location in the heart of Kitty Vitty Village is um, inspiring to the artisans who make there and sell there? We've got the best office location in town. You do, girl. <laughs> we do. You do. No, it's a, it's, you can be in a more inspiring place and a better location uh, just for inspiration from our natural, beautiful place that we were located in. And you know, guys, if you haven't been down to the Kitty Vitty Village, you gotta head down. There's so many beautiful things to see. Mm. And you know, the Artisan Studios, I feel, is a must visit location for anybody who is interested mm. in craft. Would you agree? Absolutely. Uh, particularly this summer, mm. there is so much happening this summer in addition to our resident artisans that are there year round. Um, really exciting stuff going well, on. I want to know. <laughs> of can course you, you do. Can you tease me with some things? Like, yeah. give it to me. Um, so this year for Come Home Year, we kind of 
put in a whole pile of extra stuff to mm. be exciting. Uh, first, we are celebrating 10 years, so 10 years of running the Kitty Bitty Village Artists and Studios and incubating craft people who've come through. I believe we are at 39 now who've come through the studios. Wow, that's a big 39 number. entrepreneurs in 10 years, so uh, it's it's been great. So we're gonna have an exhibition this year that kind of highlights the, the entrepreneurs who've come through and tells a little story about uh, who's been through the building and also kind of redirect people to their new businesses as well. That's so cool. That's going to be fun. I'm excited about that because I'm excited to bring some people back home to, to the yeah, studios. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we also have a community art project that I'm really excited about. Tell me more. Anyone who's been down in Kitty Vitty last summer probably seen crocheted rocks everywhere, <laughs> which was our little project last summer was our community art project. Uh, we had people come in and and crochet little pieces and they'd crochet in our main floor and leave the pieces and then we had our summer student Christina Oates uh, sew them together and cover these beautiful rocks and then it was a nice little scavenger hunt out around That's fun. Katie Vitty. So we really loved that project and we loved involving the community but it wasn't as teachable for someone who mm. just walked in the door to come participate and be a part. Sure. So this summer for a community art project uh, we've brought on a rug hooking project. So the rug hooking project, uh, rug hooking is a little bit easier to teach and mm. something that you can come in and, and in a couple of minutes you can learn the basics. Uh, it won't be perfect but we're not looking for perfect in this project and the idea is we're going to have tons of strips of recycled uh, t-shirts cut up into strips of fabric kind of using traditional Newfoundland techniques for rug hooking tons of yarn different materials that you can hook with so that people can come in and choose what kind of the piece that resonates for them and then add a little piece to the project that we're doing that's so fun yeah and I'm sure there's so much more how can we learn more about the goings-on uh, follow us on our social media is the best way to stay in touch right yeah Will do. I can't wait for the summer. I can't wait for everything that you have going on. Mm -hmm. And I speak um, for so many people in our community when I say thank you for helping do all the hard work that you and your amazing mm -hmm. team do mm -hmm. to help keep fostering craft and our knowledge and passion and interest in it and to move that ahead into the years because it's a big industry for us and I think the work that you're doing is super important. So thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you, Johnny. Will you come back again? Yes, of course. I love it because, you know, falls around the corner. I know you got yes. things going on for we that, do. too. We do. There's always something going on. <laughs> well, thank you so yes. much. Thank Guys, you. Guys, make sure that you support the Kitty Bitty Artisan mm -hmm. Studios, the Anna Templeton Center, if you have anyone in your life interested mm -hmm. in growing their love and understanding of craft. This is Out of the Fog, and we'll be right back after this break. Thank you everybody for tuning in tonight to another great episode of Out of the Fog. 20 years of Out of the Fog, by the way. No big deal. So thankful to be a part of this great show. Thank you to Melissa and the amazing work you're doing with Craft. And thank you, Summer, for coming by. We'll be seeing a lot more of you both in the future. But for now, to sing us out, this is Rust. This was Out of the Fog. This was DC. And we'll see you next time. It's a title.
about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. This is Rogers TV. Calling all journalism students. Omni Television is once again awarding scholarships to qualified students pursuing a career in third language journalism. When I found out that I won an Omni scholarship, I honestly wasn't expecting it. Winning an Omni scholarship helped me realize that I chose the right career path by pursuing third language journalism. Omni is home to a variety of locally produced current affairs programs and daily national newscasts broadcast in six languages. To learn more about Omni scholarships, visit omnitv.ca slash scholarships. My name is Chase Nicholas. I am a Mi'kmaq hockey player. Growing up, I always remember my family talking about the Mi'kmaq as the creators of the game of hockey. In grade 7, I did research on Mi'kmaq hockey sticks as the first sticks of the NHL. I found a Mi'kmaq hockey stick made in 1917, the same year the NHL was formed. I was surprised to find out the very stick I was holding was made by my great-great-grandfather, Alexander Cope. In 1934, an elder known as Old Joe Cope wrote a letter to the Halifax Herald claiming the Mi'kmaq created hockey. I found out later that I am a direct descendant of Old Joe Cope. There was a time when Mi'kmaq children were torn from their families and not allowed to speak their language, losing their words and stories. But the stories are coming back to us. Stepping on the ice, I take pride knowing the roots of the game of hockey stem from my ancestors in the Mi'kmaq 